All right, guys, today we're going to do a Shelby GT350 complete oil service. And I got everything on the table that we're going to use. And I also want to just go over a couple of important details uh, that you guys need to know because the later production 2017 models use a different oil filter. And believe it or not, this is the original style metal encased oil filter. The part number FL2069ST. And believe it or not, my customer ended up getting one of these in the mail with the filter and it's the wrong filter for his car. His, fil his car has the removable canister which is here, the FL2062. So before you order any of this stuff, you got to make sure uh, you got the right filter on your car. Otherwise you're going to order it, you're going to go to do the job, you're going to pull it off and if you don't pull it off before you realize it was the wrong filter, you're going to run into a total mess. Uh, the oil we're using today is the Amsoil 5W50. This stuff is the best oil you're going to get. Since I put it in my car and a couple of other cars, I noticed that the oil consumption no longer is present. There's no more burning of oil. Uh, a little expensive, but you know what? It's, it's well worth it. And then if, if you do have the conventional filter here and you use the wrench, you need a 22 millimeter socket. Uh, and it's also used to remove it and also to, uh, to torque it down because these have to be torqued down between 16 and 18 foot pounds. And a problem that a lot of people on the forums are talking about is that these things are coming off. And it's just a little common sense. You have to put oil on the ceiling ring and tighten it up. Because if you don't do that, the friction between the rubber and what's on the car, you're going to think that this filter is bottomed out and it's not bottomed out. And that's where you're going to run into a problem. So always put fresh oil on the rubber ceiling ring. I have a 3 8 drive with an extension here. This is to remove the drain plug on the composite oil pan. A Torx 20 on my right angle drill. This is to remove the panel to get access to the oil filter. Also important, you guys need a deep oil pan. If you use a conventional 8 quart or 10 quart pan, you're going to overflow it, you're going to make a mess. You need at least a minimum of a 5 to 6 gallon oil, oil drain pan or a 15 quart. Make sure you have the right drain pan, otherwise you're going to make a mess everywhere. And something I'm going to try today different, uh, I took a, fil um, a plastic ABS funnel here and I cut it and I'm going to modify this. Some guys use cardboard to stop the oil from going all over the place when you take the filter out. I'm going to try to make something here with the ABS funnel and you can see it here that I just cut it and sliced it out and I have two sections. So when we get under the car I'm going to show you what I'm going to do and I'm going to finish modifying this further and we're going to see if it actually makes life easier or if it doesn't do anything at all. So let's go over to the car, we're going to get started. All right, guys, we're set up under the car. I got the five gallon drain pan here. And then below that, I have my metal blitz drip pan, just in case, because I don't want to make a mess on my epoxy floor garage. You can see straight ahead, that is the drain plug. It is a composite oil pan. And uh, the plug comes out with like a quarter of a turn. It's very, very easy. I'm going to show you that now. Let me just move the camera over so I can get in there. Okay, we loosened it up, and then you can pretty much go with your hand and pull it right out. And there you go. So when you get the drain plug out, I leave it on the drip pan here, and then I'm going to clean that before we install it. So I usually wait about 30 minutes on this car to drain all of the oil out, uh, just because I want to get a, a good flush out of the system because this is the first oil change on this particular car. And uh, then I'm going to take you over to the front. I'm going to show you how to do the, uh, the oil filter removal, and I'm going to try to show what we could do with the modified funnel to see if we can make the life a lot easier and a little less messy. So stay tuned. All right, guys, we're going to show you the access panel for the oil filter. And like I said, that's why it's great to have this 12-volt cordless drill. Now, if you wanted to take off the whole underbelly tray of the car, any car, whether it's an exotic or a GT350, these are all using the Torx bits. And uh, having a tool like that just makes life a lot easier. So I'm going to shine the light up in there. And I'm going to show you guys that this car has the different and the newer styled filter. If you could guys could see it up in there. See that right there? That black canister with the hex attachment on the end of it that's the filter that's the outer canister of the filter and that's what we have to remove so we're gonna set up 
and I'm going to see if I can fix the camera in a position to show you guys exactly how we're going to get that off without making a huge mess. All right, guys, we elapsed the, uh, the drain procedure. I'm just going to give this a wipe, and we're going to put the drain plug in by hand. And like I said, you don't have to torque this down. It just goes in, and that's it. It locks into place. Very, very simple. So you guys can see, you can't screw that up. It has a little indent, and it bottoms out where you're fully tight. And it's got a spring-loaded mechanism with an O-ring, so it's not going to leak. So we're going to move over to the front, and we're going to do the torturous part of taking out the filter. And I'm going to try my best not to make a mess. All right, guys, I'm going to try something different here on this car. I'm going to access the oil filter by taking off the driver's side front wheel. It just seems to be a little bit easier because of where the angle is of the filter and the location from under the car. It's very hard to see what you're doing uh, without getting the oil splashing in your face, which happened the first time I did this. So you can just see here, I got the car supported on three of my wooden stands, and I have one jack stand under the front frame of the car. So it's secured safely. We're going to zip off the front wheel now. Some of you guys may not have access to an impact gun, but I highly suggest you go buy one. It's going to make your life a lot easier if you're going to be working on cars ever. Okay. All right, I got it. So we're going to move the front wheel out of the way, and then I'm going to show you. You guys can see it right there. You see why taking the front wheel off makes a lot of sense right now? Because uh, that's where the filter is. So if you try to do it from the bottom, it's just an awkward position of your hands and your view and the oil is going to go all over your face. So I think this is going to work out. I thought about this the first time I did my car on how could I do this a little bit easier and a little bit smarter and I think this is the way to do it. So I'm going to get set up, I'm going to move things around and we're going to turn the camera back on and we're going to do this in real time. Stay tuned. Alright guys, I just want to show you the drip pan with all the oil in there and this is why I use the Blitz pans below it. So if you do get any spillage, you're not getting it on the floor or on your driveway. So I'm going to set the camera up, and I'm going to try to get the best view of taking the filter out for you guys. So hang tight. All right, guys, I got the camera set up. I just want to show you guys with the front wheel removed, the access to the oil filter is right here, right where my finger is. So we're going to try to get that off, and we're going to try to drain it directly below in the drain pan. But it's kind of difficult to have the camera this close to... A container of that much oil so I'm a little little worried about that so we're gonna try to do our best to capture this for you guys in real time all right let me get the, I can uh, where's the wrench see maybe this will help I don't know what do you think James I don't I wasn't here for the first one so <laughs> There was just a way that I could wedge this in. Just a little. Okay, it's wedged in. All right, guys, here we go. It's all or nothing. All right, we're gonna need an extension. Let me grab an extension. All right, guys, hope you can see what we're doing here. We're going to break this loose. With a 27 millimeter. Now, if you have the other style filter, that requires a 22 millimeter with the enclosed wrench that comes when you buy the car. All right, so that's loose. Let's see what happens now. Let me just grab some shop towels. And I got the funnel wedged kind of in there. So we kind of somewhat eliminate some mess. Okay. And you can hear it, it's going right into the pan with the funnel. And then you just pull it out. 
There you go. So we're going to wipe off the outer canister and we're going to let that drain out. And the new filter comes with O-rings and they advise that you change those. Throw that in there. Okay. There we go. So there's the cartridge style filter from the GT350. This is the same filter that's used on the Ford Raptor and the EcoBoost motors. I think they did that to cut cost and just to make it universally available and it's actually cheaper. Alright guys, so we're gonna pull the O-ring off. And you can just use a box cutter like I have here. Now the O-rings that come in the kit are red. Uh, not sure if there's any reason for that, but it probably makes good sense to change this. And you just get it on. It's pretty straightforward, and it's going to go into its little seat over here. And that's it. That's the new O-ring installed. Now, I don't see any torque. Oh, no, there is torque. 24 plus or minus newton meters so we'll figure that out and then before we put it on we're going to put some new oil around the o-ring we're going to get the filter installed and then we're going to wrap up this oil change but like i said the messiest part of the job is getting the filter out but believe it or not on this one with the cartridge it did not make as much as of a, of a mess as a single piece filter so it could just be because of the way i got that modified funnel wedged up in between the subframe and the oil filter housing and it's buried into the oil drain pan right there so we didn't get anything on the floor which is great all right i just want to show you guys that if you look there's no oil all over the subframe or the steering rack because i took the plastic funnel i cut it and i heated it up and i bent it and i wedged it in between the top of the steering rack and the subframe and the lower body underbelly pan and it worked perfectly so this is a really really good tip for anyone that's going to do this job at home and do it themselves is to take a funnel sacrifice it and make yourself a little jig like I did here and uh, you're going to save yourself a big headache when it comes to cleanup all right guys so here's the filter cartridge prepped with the new o-ring and we put some Amsoil Fab W50 on the ceiling rings and on the inside so we're going to go install it now and we're going to torque it to factory spec all right guys so since the customer is watching, he wants me to torque this with the torque wrench. I have a 3 8 drive torque wrench with adapters and swivels. And we're going to go give it a good turn right now. Yeah, it's... It's tight. That ain't going anywhere. If this filter falls off, I would be very surprised. That would be sabotage. Maybe your ex-wife would do it. <laughs> no, that's it. That's tight. So as soon as the torque wrench bottoms out at 24 newton meters, you're done. So we're going to drop the car down. We're going to uh, fill the crankcase, start it up, do an oil check, and uh, we're going to wrap up this oil change. All right, guys, we finished up on the filter install, and we torqued it to spec. Now we're getting the driver's side wheel back on the car, and we're going to torque this with my snap-on torque wrench when we're all said and done today. All right, so we're going to drop the car down. And then we're going to go uh, and finish up under the hood. All right, we're going to fill the engine up oh, now with oil. We're going to do 10 quarts, and then we're going to check it. But that's pretty much what this car takes. Ooh, look how fancy this Amsoil is. <laughs> nah, that's good stuff. You're going to notice that the oil pressure is going to go up a little bit, too, with this oil. And the valve train is going to be a little quieter. Those are things that I noticed. You're going to want to hold the funnel 
with one hand and pour with the other because the funnel is at a crazy angle and you need a, a funnel that has a flex attachment on the bottom of it otherwise you're gonna have a hard time doing this with a standard straight funnel then when we're done with this I'm gonna show you how I recycle the oil and the containers that I use and then you just bring them to the auto parts store or you can bring them to any local mechanic shop that does oil recycling and they'll take the containers from you because there is an EPA law against that can't pour the oil in your garden or in the sewer drain in front of your house that'll be a big no-no I can only imagine what the fine would be especially in this day and age how many more we gotta go? You're halfway there. I'm really impressed at how clean this was to do by getting the filter out with that modified funnel. That was a home run, man. I thought about that, you know, before you came up. I was like, I gotta figure out a way to not make that happen. And some guys online. They're using cardboard. Now that's that's not going to do a good job. You got to use something rigid. Got to wet wedge it in there like I showed. We're almost done. Last one? One more. One more. All right, so this is 10 quarts right here. You want to grab me a shop towel? Just one. You always want to use a towel when you get in the funnel out just so you don't make a mess like that. All right, we're going to put the cap on. We're going to start the engine. We're going to check the oil. So let it run. Start it up. Your dipstick is right here. And make sure you don't burn yourself with the exhaust manifold because it's kind of like right there. And if you don't, you know, don't know what you're doing, your finger's going to get singed on the exhaust manifold. So let's pull it out and see where we're at. So there's two dots on the dipstick. You kind of want to get it in between the two dots. That's going to be your proper level. You don't want to overfill it. And you don't want to underfill it. And this one is like spot on. It's perfect. All right, guys, so we're done. Hope you guys uh, got some good tips on the oil change on the GT350. And I showed you a little bit about the custom funnel that I made for the bottom and explained to you the differences about the two oil filters. Make sure when you do this, check what oil filter you have in your car before you start tearing it apart and uh, just follow these easy tips and uh, you'll get this job done in 30 minutes you won't even make a mess and uh, you're good to go so any questions or comments post them below and I'll post a link to the uh, to the filters that you can buy online and the tool selection that I use to get this job done today have a great one alright guys I'm going to show you a supplemental thing here on how I recycle the oil it's okay. Uh, I always use old windshield washer fluid bottles. These things are great. Uh, I, you know, I always save them. I keep them in the shop. And you got to have a smaller funnel and have somebody holding the bottle with the funnel so it doesn't spill. And then we gradually fill these up and then we drop them off at recycling. So here we go. We're just going to go nice and easy.
And the good thing about the clear bottles is that you could kind of see what you're doing. So these are great. So next time you buy windshield washer fluid and you do work on your own cars, whether you're doing transmission change, uh, the fluid or oil change, save the bottles. These things are great. And they're about a gallon each. So for this car, it takes a lot of oil, so it's perfect. So we're done with that one. Now we're going to switch bottles, go to another one. Okay. All right, guys, so that's it for today.